in. It's in game live prime time on this Thursday evening. Yours truly, Scott Wetzel, along with Dave Sherpan for the next two glorious hours as we take you right up until 10 p.m. Eastern time, watching, uh, analyzing, and more importantly, betting on the world of sports. Ah, yes, we got a little NIT championship game tonight. It was a blowout early on, but now it's a close one. We got baseball. We got hockey, huge slate of hockey tonight, uh, decent uh, NBA games as well. We got same game parlays and uh, a little black cloud. So we got it all here. Moment of truth for the Pens, Capitals, Rockets, and believe it or not, I even think the New York Mets, who blew another game this afternoon against the Detroit Tigers. Uh, my partner in crime here for the next two hours, Mr. Sheriff Pan. Rocking the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins outfit. Nice. I like that. Yeah, we uh, we had to really dial it up tonight. Need a big big win today. I, I I told you either last night or the night before. I thought I was out with the Penguins, but like the line from the Godfather, they pulled me back in. <laughs> a big win tonight. Ovechkin, Crosby brings back the days of like Dale Hunter, Mike Gardner, Rod Langway, Pete Peters. Penguins couldn't get by them and finally did. So yeah, um, it's a good start. Two nothing Penguins. I don't break out the diagonal Pittsburgh that often. This is the Ooh. original, old school. Everything stitched, fighting strap. Officially, you know, from the team. Listen, this thing's twenty years old, twenty five years old. It still fits. I'm winning already, whether the Penguins win or not. But we're on the Penguins. So yeah, let's go. This is like a playoff game. Every game from I now on. It's like a playoff game for the Penguins. Yeah, they're, they're, they're uh, what, three back. Uh, they got 79 points of the last playoff spot, and then they're four back of, a, of another team. So they're all kind of right in a mix, and, and uh, obviously right. they're behind the Capitals. So this is, you get two points here uh, with the Capitals not getting any. I like that embroidery stuff there. You, you, you stitch, not, not, not like a stick on. You know, you got to pay extra for that. A lot this extra is, for that. This, yeah, this, is, this has the fighting strap, everything stitched. Um, if you wear this too long in the heat, you start sweating profusely. It's that thick, yeah, yeah. you know, from on the ice wear quality stuff. That's a, it's, it's, we always try to get that. It's not like the MLB uniforms now. I don't know what they're doing with the MLB uniforms now. It's a big bone of discussion, a bone of contention with a lot of people because the uniforms are almost see-through. Like in the, when they're going to sweat the summer, you're going to see everything. I don't need to see everything. And what did they ever do with that? I remember the baseball pants, you know, before the season began, they were all concerned about that. Did they ever change that? I haven't even noticed on TV. You know, are they see-through? Not that I want to see anything, but That's, that was like the big they're, thing. They're a little too thin. They, 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 yeah, they tried to go with this, uh, you know, <laughs> lightweight um, product. And uh, it's not only lightweight, but it's transparent, apparently. So, <laughs> yeah, we don't need to see that a hot – you know, July afternoon game in St. Louis where it's 150 on the field. Uh, we might see more than um, balls and strikes, yeah. if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right, it's a good start for your team tonight. Pittsburgh up yes. 2 nothing at Washington after one. Yeah. Good start yeah. for my Bruins as well. How about that? Yes. Uh, 3 nothing against Carolina. Uh, my, yeah. my, my, my Bruins might be like getting into like playoff gear. Not, not that they poo-pooed this regular season, but they had a little slump there. But they, they seemingly have broken out of it. Nice nice start against Carolina. I didn't see that one coming. I really thought yeah. this would be Carolina's answer. Catching Boston on a road trip and terrible first period by the Hurricanes. Good first period by the Bruins. You know, I do the show with Peralta. You've done stuff with them. Bostonian versus the book. This Bruins team is getting better. Everything's coming together, Pepper. It's all coming together. So, got to look at Bruins futures and things like that. This is going to, I think, help that perception. Yes, the Bruins are fine. Everything's everything's working. I wouldn't even entertain. I think the only bet right now in that game is Carolina plus two and a half. And I don't know how far I want to chase that. I don't even right. want to. I don't. I don't know if if the Bruins are going to lock it down. This might be one of those four one five one wins. Saw that against Florida the other night. Right, and no score. They finally uh, scored, and they end up uh, winning three to nothing. So, right now, it's it's kind of a tough uh, slate of games to bet right now. In that Boston's up three nothing. You know, if it was one nothing, no big deal. But three nothing, that's tough to bet. Florida's supposed to be leading. They are two nothing over Ottawa. 
Pittsburgh and Washington, it's, you know, maybe you can take a flyer on the Capitals, I suppose, down two zip at home, but that's a big spread. Tampa Bay is supposed to be leading Montreal. They are. And then the Islanders in Columbus, if you're betting that, then uh, God bless you, I suppose. Uh, maybe the over. But so <laughs> hockey needs to kind of, we need to get some goals here or something to kind of generate a little more betting sides of things. Right? The, the better teams are all leading. So it's yes. tough to bet that sort of stuff. It so. is. Um, I take a look at the Islanders now. It's 2 2 after 1. If they score the next goal, that price is going to double. So I got to look it down here about minus 170 or minus 180, depending on where you shop. That one. Islanders are going to beat the Blue Jackets, and I, I would think, I you know that's just again first blush. You see what's happening in Washington today in baseball. You see the Pirates. Yes. We're getting another Pirates. W. Looks like we're we're we're, we're getting there. This is uh, this is a good way to go into the weekend. We could get, you know, for years when we did the show with Gabe and Cam, the city parlay never happened. It's just hard for both teams or sometimes three teams playing in certain parts of the year to win. But looks like we can get the Pirates and we get the Penguins. This is a good thing. But the baseball board, we had a lot of day games today, Scott. Uh, yeah. The, the, <laughs> White Sox in Kansas City just underway. What do you like there? Yeah, uh, to pick your poison on that, right? Like, what do I like there? NIT. <laughs> That's what I like. I mean, who, who knows, right? How could you possibly have an angle on White Sox versus Kansas? How many people on a Thursday night in early April in Chicago are at the, whatever they're calling themselves these days, uh, field to watch the White Sox and Kansas City Royals? I mean, it might not reach Oakland A's levels, but what are you going to get? 10,000, 11,000, maybe 12 tonight? one nothing uh, uh, Royals? Oh, actually, yeah. it's, in, you know, it's in Kansas City. My bad. I thought it was in uh, still. Right, how many people in Kansas City that are going to be going to go, go see the White Sox? Same same scenario, but in Kansas City versus Chicago. Considering it's raining in so many places yeah. across the country, if it's not raining there, maybe they'll get a decent crowd. But – I mean, that thing was priced like I don't know how to price the White Sox games anymore. Kansas City's minus, closed minus 190, minus 180. Ooh. And you go, wow. All right. So now do you hope that the White Sox score a run and that's when you jump on Kansas City? I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, pick your poison. That, that's probably it, right? I mean, if you really had to play the game and really, there weren't that many baseball games at all today. You know, they had a few. You know, fortunately, you had the Mets Tigers doubleheader. Otherwise, you wouldn't have had that game. And other than that, there were just a, a couple of games. Nice job by the Cardinals. I had the Cardinals in one of my uh, just goofy little teases, you know, afternoon stuff. Man, let me throw some stuff in, right? Uh, and today it worked out. I uh, had the Tigers down early against the Mets in game one. They rallied. Had the Cardinals. They were down early in their game. Uh, and they rallied. They won. So, uh, and I got Pittsburgh, and they just won seven to four. So not, not too bad. Good little start. There you go. Pirates and Penguins. Little PP action here on the grid. Right. All right, we'll look at the uh, the basketball scoreboard when we come back. <laughs> Sports Grid's going to have you covered for this NCAA tournament. Ah, oh, that's the movie that we know. When it's winter, go home. They love to go home. Tennessee's now in my phony club. They should all get together and drink green tea. That is a team I'm betting on right now. We are feeling this. You are feeling this at home. The excitement and the atmosphere only on Sports Grid. The betting in game, there's a big difference. Like, like the the computer changes the number so often. Like I tried to get this in right now, but in reality, as I saw plus one sixty five. In the arena, they're hitting the shot. And I'm getting this like a couple of seconds late. And even the sports book, like technology can always like travel so fast. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid.
great thing about Bracket Central, it is that premier second screen experience. You have the screen of the game up on one, us on the other. Here's the thing, yeah. Just have, you can, you can put the game on. Just two things. Just turn all the volume down. You have us. We'll guide you to the best. We'll guide you to the game, and I'll give you my coaching tip as, as the games go through. See if we can find some betting opportunities. Only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. What I've heard you say on the network is you're either winning or you're rebuilding. In-game live all access. Nobody has been more profitable as a dog than Shaka Smart teams. Winning back-to-back road games. I I don't care if they're playing Topeka High. I I wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever. In-game live. Prime time. Back-to-back just utterly stinker quarters. In-game live. Overtime. Honestly, as as you sit here and listen watch right now, you may want to consider placing that bet. It's smarter to be on. In game live prime time here on the grid. Scott Wetzel Day Share a pen on this uh, Thursday evening, just getting underway. A little hockey, a little uh, basketball, a little NIT final. We'll get to that. I believe that's at halftime right now. And some uh, NBA news today, Dave, as uh, Knickerbocker fans, uh, not not good. Uh, but, but, you know, honestly, to be expected, uh, they announced that Julius Randle, uh, who was trying to recover from a separated shoulder, they didn't have surgery. It happened back in January. They were hoping it's going to heal by itself. It hasn't. And they finally came to the conclusion uh, that Knicks fans feared that uh, he is going to have season-ending surgery done for the regular season, postseason. And uh, you know, they're talking about him starting maybe on time next year. So uh, tough news for the Knicks and their fans. They've been playing, you know, halfway decent, actually, without him. It's been a while, you know, back in January. But uh, Coach James Young on on Coast to Coast gave his thoughts on whether you could put a fork in the Knicks' playoff hopes. They should have. And I guess what the Knicks were trying to do is they were hoping that rest would would heal it. Because even they said afterwards, even they made it through the season, they was going to require surgery. So now you're at a point, Pharrell, is is he even going to be ready for the start of next year? That, that, That becomes an interesting thing. And if I'm not mistaken, I think last year or next year is the second last year of his contract extension, which then means he may be moved So to a Nick team that really has not been relevant for a long time. First time they've been relevant in a while, back-to-back years, they lose Randall. We don't know when OG's coming back. That's another injury that no one knows what's going on. The Knicks went from a team that, Pharrell, before the injuries to Randall and OG, were playing the best basketball in the league. Don't, I'm not saying it. Go look at their record when that happened. Now they're a team now that in the first round, depending on who they play, they may go home. All right. There you go. A coach uh, in, uh, on Coast to Coast with Scotty Farrell. Yeah. Knicks are in a little bit of trouble here. Uh, listen, the, right now they're sitting in the number five spot, and there's three teams all with 31 losses. So they're tied for third or in fifth, depending on how you want to look at it. But, uh, Dave, you know, they're only three up on Indiana. Uh, I'll, I'll check here in a second who holds the head-to-head tiebreaker. But if the Pacers hold the head-to-head tiebreaker, then I tell you, it, the Pacers in the number seven spot, the Knicks could fall into a play-in situation very easily. Uh, they've lost a couple in a row. They lost three in a row. Uh, they're getting killed tonight at home against Sacramento, albeit early on. Um, this is a, you know, it's starting to be a sink and ship with the, with the Knicks. And that would be too bad because, as Coach mentioned, they were playing some good ball. I don't think it's a Randall injury, you know, because they were playing good without him. But maybe it was just a matter of time before the Knicks turned into the New York Knicks. Until they turned into the Knicks, uh, JY was right. They were like 17 and two. And, you know, Brunson was being disgusted by some people as being, you know, that guy, him or whatever the kids say now. He is him. 
you know, I don't think anybody was really considering him to be the MVP of the league. That would have been a bit of a stretch. But look at the prices. They 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 flip flop them and the the Sixers. You know, the Sixers were down at twenty three to one, twenty to one to win the East, and you basically move them up, take the Knicks down. The Knicks were in arguments, the second best team in the East and a team that could win a series against the Celtics. And at this point of the season, you're trying to find a team that is going to beat the Celtics in a seven-game series. You can rule the Knicks out from that now. It's done. They're not beating yeah. they're, they're not beating the Celtics in a seven-game series. I don't know who needs to hear that. They may not even win a series in the playoffs. They could have used the home court. They can still get it, but the way things are going, I mean, they're getting smoked tonight, like you said, against Sacramento. And if it's not them, Scott, is it – I mean, I, you, you said it yesterday. You still – with this Heat team, you're still on board with them being the one that, you know, has value on that list? Yeah. I mean, listen, it's tough to really say that, but I just know how much trouble they give the, the Celtics. And, and they got that little hex – um, whereas I think they would get a fighting chance. And, and again, you know, the NBA, more than any other team and any other sport, rather, is you, you can't go on what happens in the regular season. You just can't. These veteran teams, once they realize, okay, we're not going to go 82-0, and 0, now the goal is just to make the playoffs. And, and different things happen in the postseason, and guys elevate their game, different guys choke. It's just a whole different game. So I, I'm not going to take Miami's, you know, 500 record and say, oh, there's no way they can be the team that's 30 games over 500. It, it could happen. It, it really could. And, and back to the Celtic or uh, the Knicks for a second, you know, let's say they lose tonight, right? They're, they're down double digits. Now they got a two-game lead. They do not hold a head-to-head tiebreaker against Indiana. The Pacers do. They start a four-game road trip at Chicago. All right, they could win that, right? At Milwaukee, kind of a weird trip. Back to Chicago again. Um, and, you know, Milwaukee, Chicago is separated by an hour's drive, so it, but it's kind of weird. Um, and then at Boston. Then they got a rival Ooh. game against the uh, the, uh, the Nets. Ooh. And then they finish up with Chicago again. They played the Bulls three times in the last nine games of the regular season. Uh, you know, who's, who's, what bozo made up that schedule? Um, I don't know what so Chicago's situation is going to be. Determining- Right, that those games yeah. against the Bulls could determine their spot, which is yeah. really strange to say at this point, but it's very possible. Absolutely, very possible. I mean, they could be in a playing situation. I, I don't think they would yeah. fall to the number nine spot, but they, I could see them fall to seven or eight with that schedule. Um, I know they don't hold the head-to-head mm. tiebreaker with Indiana, which is sitting now in the number seven spot, or or maybe Philadelphia. You know, mm. starts playing good ball with a beat back. I could definitely see them. You know, winning a number of games. So, yeah, Knicks are in trouble. Who, who's, you know, who's going to be? I still think the pecking order is Milwaukee one and then Miami two. You can have the Magic. They're not going to lose to the Magic. Uh, they're not going to lose to the Knicks. They're not losing to the Pacers. They always beat the 76ers even when they were healthy. So they're not losing to the 76ers. Not this year. They're going to – they don't want to see though, I'll tell you what. How about the Hawks? Just beat them twice. They're winning again tonight. They've won six of their last seven. I thought they Hawks. were a very live dog tonight. A live, yeah. live dog on the money line tonight. Even at Dallas, who I know is playing great basketball, but it's Mavericks, you know, generally don't play well at home. And uh, yeah. last time I checked, the, the Hawks were actually leading, leading that game. Maybe the Hawks would knock have. off the, the Celtics. 35 33, nine minutes to go in the second quarter for the Hawks. Right. So. In the game, game closed. Uh, let me get the actual closing number right here. 11 12. and a 11. half or 12. Wow. Yeah. So this would be a nice money line play if you can uh, yeah. get that one home. I don't know. This might be that time you'll see a lot of, I mean, Dallas bets, right? What's that number right now? If I click refresh. Eight and a half. I have seven and a half here. Seven and I half. think we yeah. got to get under under six and a half, right? We got to get to five thinking. and a half. It's, you know, yeah. two two buckets, you know, or three, two three pointers. Under under six is good, at least if you're going to bet Dallas, you get the number that's yeah. half of what the closer was. So that's half the battle. Our, uh, you know, it was fun while it lasted, Dave. Uh, Golden State sixteen, Houston Rockets four. 
we're, we're done. Uh, you know, it was nice. Little 16 to one shot on Houston to make the play in situation. Like we got it to one and one in the standings, but really two because they lose the tiebreaker. But they lost right. a couple of games. Gold State's been on fire. So now they're four back with seven left. Even if Houston would have won today, it, it would be, you know, next to impossible. So we have, but we, we came close. We, we, you know, we were, you know, we got our right. money's worth out of that six, 16 to one ticket. But yeah. not yeah. happening. Well, that's okay. I mean, you know, and, and for those of you that may have missed it, Wetzel took a shot with the Houston to, to make the play in game. They ended up winning, what, eight in a row? After we uh, we said that, right? Yeah, nine. Um, I think it was nine or ten, something like that. It was a, it was a hell of a run. But you're already like they can't win tonight. We're already ruling this out. You you you're doing that. You're doing that thing again. Yeah. Listen, even if they the, what killed them was Tuesday night. They went into Tuesday night. You know, listen, it was a tough spot, but they were playing at Minnesota. And Gold State was at home against Dallas. And we thought maybe, just maybe, you know, if, even if they come out of that as a split, you'd be down three. Then you got Gold State. Now you're down two today. But they lost and Gold State won. And you, you're down four with seven left. Yeah, it, it would be really tough. All right, in game live. So I'm not sure Alabama is the team to knock them off from this second consecutive national championship chase. But what will be the key for the Crimson Tide if they can even cover a number? That wing ball screen action, how you defend that, is going to be a problem because a Donovan Klinger, it forces you to change so much what you do defensively if he's able to score inside. Only on Sports Grid. <laughs> Talk all you want about how fat he is. No one can guard him. No one can stop him. He's a violent offender. He does whatever he wants in the low block and at the 10. He just does whatever he wants and scores at will at nauseam. They're the Mike Tyson of college basketball. At some point, they're going to throw a haymaker. And when it connects, Pharrell, you're not getting up. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early the line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late Night. This sort of written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
Hi, welcome back. It is in game live prime time right here on the grid on a Thursday. It feels like a Friday to me. I'm not sure why, but uh, it, it certainly does. Scott Wetzel, Dave Shear, Pam for the next hour and uh, 40 minutes or so, talking and uh, looking at uh, some lines, a little NHL, a little NIT. We got the uh, full slate of hockey and uh, one baseball game, uh, believe it or not, Dave, uh, still going on. Rare Thursday. I don't remember Thursdays being this light. We had the day uh, doubleheader with, with Detroit in the Mets, and then we only had a couple of games tonight. Uh, Jack and I, our producer, were talking uh, during the break. You know, normally Mondays are pretty slow. Wednesdays you get your get getaway day games, couple getaway day games on Thursday. But generally, you know, um, they had the getaway days on Wednesday. This way you could play Thursday night. But uh, we got one biggie here. Kansas City won nothing over the White Sox as they play in the fourth inning. Um, and it takeaways from that game. And, and then uh, earlier today, your Pirates did win. Guardians won. Um, Mets broke out of, of you know their, their 0 and 5 uh, losing streak. They blew the first game, but they did take the second game two to one. So they're off the schneid. So we got one uh, losing team left, and that would be the Miami Marlins, who blew a 5 3 lead. Mm. 0 and 8 are the Marlins. Oof. Yeah, good uh, for the Jeter get the out of there at the right time or what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. If you have under season wins and that under 78 and a half, under Pretty 78, good. that's a good start. Your team starts, you know, you need under the team starts 0 and 8. I mean, they can go 500 the rest of the way and you win. That's a pretty good deal. So, yeah. um, I, I'm excited about the pi the pirates. This is, a, this is a really good start, you know, starting on the road, on the road and win this many games. They come home for a weekend series with the Orioles. Um, reminds me of the 79 World Series every time the Pirates and the Orioles play together. So I'll be excited to see that. Uh, I don't know what to take away from. I'm telling you, I, I got a feeling that Cleveland's going to lurk all season long. This is a nice win on the road at Minnesota. And Cleveland's got Bieber at the top as long as he's healthy couple starters behind him. Things come together. I think the AL Central, you start to see the odds right there, get a little bit adjusted. Uh, Minnesota, basically a pick em to win the division. There's a couple teams behind them are live. Guardians, Tigers, Royals tonight, 12 to 1. That price is too high. That That's going to come down too. The Royals are going to be around. I don't know. Their season win total closed 74, and a lot of sharp guys I know are on the over. That was a very popular choice amongst, you know, a bunch of people in the baseball world. But I don't know, Scott, Thursdays, Wednesdays. If you got to have a day that's like the day in between, I feel like Thursday's better because it sets up the weekend series. There's, there, there's right. very few series starting today. That was always like a reset for me when I was in the book. It was like, all right, on Thursday, you're looking at all the work for the weekend. You're looking at the matchups. You're looking at what numbers you're going to use, different things like that. It's nice to have a day where there's a bunch of day games. Everybody can relax, and then you focus on the rest of the stuff. Yeah. If you were going to do a blanket bet uh, and take your fandom out of it, would you do the Tigers, who are 5-1, and one, playing good ball, or the Pirates? To or win their the division? Standings. No, just you're going to bet them every single day. You know how I like to do that. Not yeah. to not win the division. That's that's a long, um, long, long haul. Um, Yankees, Tigers, or or Pirates. Which one kind of do you believe in more? That you know what you just play these guys every day, and by the end of the month, you'll you'll make money. Well, I think the one that will be least affected by the success, price wise, would be the Pirates, right? Because right. they got the lowest season win total. I one hundred percent, it would not be the Yankees. There's no way you're buying them at the top, and they were already near the top. So you're looking to fade the Yankees if, if, if you're looking at anything right now because you're going to get a much better price. Even this week, That they're going to be heavy. They went on a road and started 6-1 and one when anybody thought, you know, what, they win 92 games was around the season win total. So right. no on the Yankees. The Tigers, I could be coerced into it depending on the matchups. I think you'll get good prices on them, not great. But the Pirates will continue to be undervalued in the market because who believes in the Pirates, even after a good start like this? They haven't believed in the Pirates in years. I got the season win total over last year. 
the guys moved it up this year. 74 and a half. That's a, that's a very healthy number. I'm not sold yet on anything, but yes, I'm excited about their start. How about the, the NL Central, which you, know, you can make the argument is, was, maybe, eventually will be the worst division of baseball. Everybody is 500 or better. Cardinals winning today, rallying. They're 4-4. Four and four. Cubs 4-4, four and four, and I don't think the Cubs are any good. Reds are 4-2. and two. I like them, but not, you know, not, not World Series-like. And uh, the Brewers and Pirates, 4-1 uh, and 6-1. And, and and um, early on, first week. But I would not have pictured the NL Central. If you would have asked me, you know, a week before the season began, you know, which uh, division is going to have uh, 500 teams or higher after the first six, seven games, I, I would not have said the NL Central. I'll tell you that. I don't know what I would have said, but I wouldn't have said them. So they haven't played each other yet. That's that's where you start right. to see, you know, obviously when they start to play each other. And the division schedule used to be so heavy loaded where they were playing each other either 18 or right. 19 times and everybody plays each other 13 times. I think that's a good thing because it makes, one, everybody play everybody at least once, but two, the division games now mean even more because there's less of them. So – you have to win the division games. I think you have to have success against four of the five teams in the division. Am I surprised by the NL Central success? Yeah, a little bit, but I've been so dialed into this division for the last, I don't know, five to ten years. As the Pirates got good in the like 2014, 2015 era, I was like, all right, let's go. Here we go. We, got, we can win the division. We can make a wild card. So I like to see how the prices fluctuate. The St. Louis price is still them as the favorite. And you go, wow, okay. That was a nice little successful road trip for them. I, you wouldn't have thought that that would have been the case. They got to open at the Dodgers and then go to San Diego. It's no bargain. They came out of it. More wins and losses right there, 500. That's good. We're winning money with our old, bot, our old Dodger bet. Seven and two, not too bad. They haven't quite been as big a favorites as I thought, e even at home. Now, they played the Giants, you know, and then they played the two games over in, in Seoul, Korea, so that, that didn't uh, help matters. But still, I, I almost figured every game was going to be at least 250, 300, and that's not been the case. So at seven and two, you're actually up a couple hundred dollars if you're a hundred dollar player. Um, I, I'm going to keep on doing it, it's making us money. Uh, we're playing with house money now. We, we, we basically have about one loss to give. If we lose once, then we're back to even at this point uh, at okay. seven and three. So you got to continue this seven and two pace. But um, them and the Atlanta Braves, I, I think it, we, we play them in parlays all the time. I'm telling yep. you, we're going to win some money. No question. Uh, again, you find the teams that are going to be closer to winning 100 games and you put them together and then you look at the teams that are going to lose 100 games or more, or at least that you think are, Oakland, Colorado, and you can put the opponents of those teams together. The baseball betting is so like I, I, I think I said it last night on here, and I know I've told Matt this many, many times. It's mundane. It's boring. Yep. It's repetitive, just like the drills, just like practice. I used to tell the girls all the time, Coach Dave, why are we doing this uh, infield drill again? Because this is what the game is. You have to know how to do this every single time you get something. When you go to the window or you open up your app, it's not bad. Dodgers, Dodgers, Dodgers. They're going to win more games than they're going to lose a lot more. Yeah. And I tell you, I had a lot of success last year, Dave, doing this. Uh, and not necessarily for the first time, but religiously for the first time. I don't care who's pitching. And and I know that sounds so stupid, like, but I don't bet pitchers. And I, I challenge anybody out there to bet three, four, five games a night based on who the starting pitchers will be. Because one, um, the starting pitchers only go five innings anyway. So you're basically betting a, a full game on a half a game because the guys only go five, six innings. And then two, you just, you know, these guys don't win all their games. They can pitch well. So I just go by teams. If, if I like a team in a series, you know what? I like this team in a series. And I generally look for underdogs. So if I think, uh, you know, Pittsburgh, you know, they're going into Chicago to face the Cubs. You know, I think I think the Cubs are going to – or the Pirates are going to hold their own. Bet them three times. And when they win two out of the three, you win money. Or if they win the first game, you can leave because you, you won money. 
Um, I like doing it that way. I, I really do. And I try not to make it harder than it has to be. You know, who's going to win between Milwaukee and Minnesota? Who knows? I mean, you know, right? But right. I know who's going to win between the Dodgers and Rockies. You know, I know who's going to win between the Braves and, and Marlins. Uh, that I right. do know. Got to lay juice. I get it. But I prefer doing that than I do, like, looking at the pitchers and analyzing who's pitching well. Yeah. Nobody, nobody wins that way. No way. I don't believe it. It's very, very hard. It's very, yeah. very hard. I think if you take a lot of recent results out of it, I think you have to kind of remove yourself from that and also do what you exactly just said. Just kind of keep it simple and routine, and you'll be better off. Um, Have you looked at the college baskets? Have you dove any deeper into what's going on with college baskets? Because we've got a guy coming up who's going to want to ask us or talk about the college baskets. Yeah, we got the Hall leading by three. They've been trying yes. to pull away against Indiana State, but Indiana State, and they have, but Indiana State kind of comes back a little bit, get a little bit higher scoring than I thought it would be. Um, so I liked Indiana State in that game. What about you? Real quick. I was on the Hall. I'm on the Hall. Yeah? So Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, I figured Indiana State just at home, basically. Basically a home game. So yeah. Jack Dawson will come out we'll, 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 we'll talk some uh, college news with him. So I'm not sure Alabama is the team to knock them off from this second consecutive national championship chase. But what will be the key for the Crimson Tide if they can even cover a number? That wing ball screen action, how you defend that, is going to be a problem because a Donovan Klingon it forces you to change so much what you do defensively if he's able to score inside. Only on Sports Grid. Talk all you want about how fat he is. No one can guard him. No one can stop him. He's a violent offender. He does whatever he wants in the low block and at the 10. He just does whatever he wants and scores at will ad nauseum. They're the Mike Tyson of college basketball. At some point, they're going to throw a haymaker. And when it connects Pharrell, you're not getting up. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. This sort of written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
Hi, right, welcome back in game live prime time hour number one scott wetzel dave sharepin uh, until 10 p.m eastern time taking a look at all the action on this uh, thursday evening ncaa action uh, believe it or not tonight and obviously the final four on saturday so let's welcome in a man who a uh, little little uh bias towards uconn i'm told that is uh, jeff dawson from uh, east coast sports investors what's going on jeff how are you tonight uh i'm glad to be here scott and dave how are you Oh, we're good, good, man. We're good. Uh, quickly, while this game's going on, before we get to, you know, the UConn portion of the show, which I knew you would be ready to talk about, what about this NIT? Uh, you talked about it briefly on the in the break, but Indiana State team total was what you were talking about early before the game started? 81 and a half. We took the under there, uh, slight lean to Seton Hall. Seton Hall was one of the three teams to beat UConn, uh, this year, other than Kansas and, uh, Matt Peralt's Creighton. I figured I'd give him a yes. shout out there. Blue Jays. Yep. Uh, uh, expect, expect a back and forth game. Uh, I was just thinking Seton Hall and defensively might be able to, you know, slow down. Uh, you no, know, when I think of Indiana State, what do I think of Larry Bird and Magic Johnson? But now they got some guy named Kareem uh, that it, both teams should have been in the tournament. We both know that. But uh, I think it's going to be, you know, down to the wire. But I'm hoping that they don't score 82 or more, obviously. I kind of like that, Jeff. I, I don't know if you use the philosophy of the whole world's going to be on the over after watching them put nearly 200 points on the board in the United States uh, in their previous game. So I, I don't know if that was why you liked the under, but, uh, you know, at least kind of the under, uh, at least uh, from uh, Indiana State standpoint. But um, I do like I, I thought it was going to be a lower scoring. In fact, I'm a little surprised it's at 162 and a half now. So it's, it's kind of on pace for what the original number was, but I, I thought Seton Hall would really kind of slow things down here, but clearly they're not doing that. Indiana State, uh, it's been poetry in motion watching them. Uh, kind of the NIT America's team uh, definitely slighted on Selection Sunday with Seton Hall. Um, two great teams. Uh, I just thought eventually, you know, when you put up 100, uh, usually you don't bounce back with a, you know, a 90 point performance. So I'm hoping, you know, there were flashes there that I looked like a genius. There was like, uh, uh, they had like 24, 26 points to go with like four minutes to go before the half. And then they went on a run and they got to 39, started slow again. Seton Hall came out early in the second half. But again, this Indiana State team won't go away. The one thing I'm definitely not wishing for, guys, I don't need to see any overtime here. <laughs> yeah. it's the worst. You definitely don't. Um, before we get to, you know, again, the game, it's the first game on Saturday is Purdue and NC State. And the line is telling you mm, it's going to be a blowout. But NC State is the, the story of the tournament. They just find ways to win games. They actually end up dictating pace in games. And Purdue, I, I mean, they earned their spot here with that game against Tennessee. That was just a classic college basketball game. Any field side or total for you in the of the games on Saturday for you? If you look at this NC State team, they had to win five in a row in the ACC tournament. Uh, it took uh, an act of God uh, a three-pointer at the buzzer against Virginia and then go to OT just to get to the next game. So usually when you win five in a row to get into the tournament, it's kind of like, oh, we made it, we did our job. This team has gone on and won four more in a row. Something, I tell you what, I, I and probably most of the world didn't think that would happen. Now facing a, a team that was the number one seed last year who lost to a 16, uh, the two-time uh, player of the year with Zach Eady, Matt Painter, the Big Ten. Um, I think I will be taking the nine and a half. I will take a, you know, a swing there. I like the dog. I like the story. I was going to add to this uh, 1983. I think both of us, or all three of us remember Jim Valvano. Yeah. Uh, uh, and that was a Cinderella team knocking off Houston. Uh, uh, no one thought that was the five slam of jam. Uh, Akeem Elijah won. That was Clyde Drexler. They had beaten Villanova just before them by 30. So they're kind of in that same spot. The thing that scares me the most 
is, and I hate to use the R word and the refs, but if you look at the foul situation, when you're playing a Purdue team, uh, I, you know, the big guy Burns, he could get into foul trouble in the first four minutes. And if they face UConn on Monday, the same thing could happen to Klingon. So I don't want to say the refs are going to dictate this. NC State knows how to play this game. I think it's going to be a pretty competitive game. How do you explain it, Jeff? I mean, this team, you know, it, listen, if you play well at the end of the year and you've struggled earlier, okay, I, I get it. It took you a little while to gel. I understand that. But they, they were playing lousy heading into the ACC tournament. They had lost four in a row, seven of nine. I mean, they were barely over 500. And, okay, maybe you win a couple of games, but to win the ACC championship and then obviously not stop, I mean, is this the real North Carolina team, uh, North Carolina State team, or, or is it the one that, you know, was 17 and 14 uh, at the end of the regular season? You know, it's funny. I was on them early. I had a lot of success early with their team totals. I thought it was going to be a, a team that could score easily into the 80s, and we had a lot of success with them early. But they got into conference play, and they were struggling and struggling hard. And i got to be honest with you, in this nine-game winning streak, I've had them once. I, I think I was looking too far from what they had done in the past and it's like, they're going to, you know, this is going to blow up sooner than later. And, and not only, again, to win the five in a row in the ACC tournament, but what they have done in these first four games in the two weekends, now to face Zach, I, I mean, I think it's a gift for nine and a half points. Uh, I think they'll be competitive. I think they can play defensively. And I think, you know, it'll be interesting how the refs call this game and Edie never gets into foul trouble, but if he happened to get a couple quick ones, then you got to step back and say, okay, we're not used to this, and let's see what happens. All right, we got to do it. You know, you're Mr. Yukon. I was going to have you talk about the Celtics and how great they are, or I could have gone and brought the Bruins and how great they are, which is both the Wetzel's wheelhouse, because I know, you know, you're the Boston guy <laughs> and everything like that, but you know, you, you know the UConn team as good as anybody. You you know, you got kids that go to school there. You got season tickets. You've been going to these games. Do they have a shot at all of losing that game on Saturday? <laughs> Look at this spread. They're not losing, <laughs> are they? Well, Dave, you also forgot to say the Red Sox have the best ERA in the MLB right now. I'm talking about the Red so. Sox, Jeff. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I go back to last year. I, I, I go back to Sonogo, Hawkins, and Andre Jackson. They were relied on three guys, and, and, and Sonogo and Hawkins carried them through the tournament. This year, it's a full team effort. They got a healthy Klingon. They got Castle. They got Newton. They got Cam Spencer. Uh, they got Stewart coming off the bench. Slam Johnson. Uh, they lost three times this year. Uh, early in the season, they lost at Kansas in a close game. They lost the first game in the Big East to Seton Hall. And then the, on top was, you know, it was tailor-made. They weren't going to win at Creighton, and they got blown out. And the difference between last year's team and this year's team is they lost in the semis in the Big East tournament. And, and this was a big chip on their shoulder. They wanted to go back and make sure they won the Big East tournament, and they did. Uh, they can beat you 99. They can beat you 68. There, there's no holes in this game right now, Dave. They offer a prop, uh, Jeff, on FanDuel. Highest scoring game. And while it figures to be Alabama uh, and, and UConn, I, I don't know. You know, I, I don't know if uh, UConn wants to get into a run and gun affair with them. They're giving us NC State and Purdue at plus 260 on that. Wow. Uh, do you expect a run and gun UConn-Alabama game or... We've seen UConn shut some teams down, real good teams. I I, I can't lie. Uh, uh, last weekend, 23-23, uh, two minutes to go before the half at TD Garden right down the road from me. Uh, I think I went to the bathroom and I came back and it was 28-23 at half. Uh, I made a sandwich. I grabbed something. And, and then there was a 25 to nothing to start the second half. And I, 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 yeah. I couldn't believe it because <laughs> – I'm sitting there at halftime. I'm saying Illinois got a real shot here because they didn't shoot the ball well. You regroup at halftime. You come out 25 nothing. Thanks for playing. Um, Purdue can score. 
NC State can score. So the value there, and we know what the value means, obviously. It's only value unless we're cashing the ticket. But at a price like that, it's definitely, Scott, worth the price of admission for sure. 160 and a half approximately for the total, 146 and a half for the other game. So that's 14 point difference. If you trust the number, I think Wetzel's, you know, that might be a black cloud special. I don't know, Scott. I'm not sold on that one. That one might be a tough, that one might be tough. Um, I'm going to give you a shot here to, to, to wax poetic about your Celtics. And we talked about it. We had a clip from coach on earlier. Trying to determine who the second best team in the Eastern Conference is, JD. It's not the Knicks anymore, I don't think. It might be Milwaukee. That's the odds. That's what it tells you. But the Sixers numbers moved, you know, it's been lowered because Embiid's back. Wetzel thinks it's Miami Heat. What do you think? I know you don't think it's anybody but the Celtics in the East, but who's the second best team in the East? Well, the funny thing about the playoff Miami Heat is they could face the Celtics in the first round, and that's the one team the Celtics don't want to play uh, 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 is the Heat. Jimmy Butler uh, turns into Jimmy Butler, the playoff monster, and, and it's a bad matchup. Not just – it just – I think more psychologically right now when the Celtics have to play the Heat and they have to play them in the first round. Do I expect the Celtics to win? I do. Of course I do. But the fact of the matter is that's the one team the Celtics don't want to play. So, Dave, on paper, I know Embiid coming back, you know, he should be well-rested, obviously. Doc Rivers, seven games, forget about it. Uh, you you got to still take the box. You, you do. I, I, I mean – they got Giannis. They got Lillard. I, I, I mean, they're there. They were built for a long run in the playoffs. I, I still think you got to go back to the Bucks, Dave and Scott. Confidence level in Joe Mazzulla making decisions uh, on the sidelines in close games, Jeff, because <laughs> I, I, I'm not impressed with him. Looks like Foster. <laughs> uh, no, that, that right. and the – that and the Tatum fadeaway. I, he tries to think uh, he's like Larry Bird and does that step yeah. back jump shot. And, and, and I tell you what, us three could do it, and I think we'd have a better percentage than he does in the final shot. And also, Jason Tatum, uh, Jason Tatum, uh, Jalen Brown uh, 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 got dinged up on his hand. So keep an eye on that in the next week to 10 days. He should be ready for the playoffs. But again, it's the Celtics to lose. I think they get through the East. Denver's 2-0, don't forget, against the Celtics. They won in Boston. Uh, Celtics will probably be about minus 180 or 190 if it is the Nuggets, which I think would be a great, great series overall. But uh, it's the Celtics versus the Wild Wild West. You got 10 seconds. Denver's at the Clippers tonight, laying points on the road at the Clippers. Any lean or side there? A Clippers money line. How's that sound? Woo! Ooh. Plus 130. There you go. Jeff Dawson. Jeff, great job. We'll do it again soon. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. So I'm not sure Alabama is the team to knock them off from this second consecutive national championship chase. But what will be the key for the Crimson Tide if they can even cover a number? That wing ball screen action, how you defend that, is going to be a problem because a Donovan Klingon, it forces you to change so much what you do defensively if he's able to score inside. Only on Sports Grid. <laughs> Talk all you want about how fat he is. No one can guard him. No one can stop him. He's a violent offender. He does whatever he wants in the low block and at the 10. He just does whatever he wants and scores at will at nauseam. They're the Mike Tyson of college basketball. At some point, they're going to throw a haymaker. And when it connects Pharrell, you're not getting up. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. 
But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early the line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Lucas is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. This let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. It is in game live prime time, wrapping up our number one. Still a lot to get to, so don't go anywhere. As, uh, we are here for another full hour after uh, this upcoming break. Uh, and speaking of which, uh, you know what time it is. Uh, we always do it here on the grid, and that is uh, Black Cloud time here on in game live. All right, uh, this is, really is the black cloud because th there's just no way this is going to happen uh, or not happen, uh, really. That is the uh, a little hockey here tonight. We're going to use the L.A. Kings against the god-awful San Jose Sharks who are playing for absolutely nothing. Kings are playing for everything. They got to still get a few more points in order to secure a, a playoff spot. So there's just no, no way. Now, I'm not going to lay three to one, which is what the line is, but I will lay two to one. Rather than the one and a half goals, uh, you know, I kind of hem and haul back and forth on that stuff. But tonight I decided, you know what, they're not going to lose first off. And, and they're not going to need, you know, to go to overtime. So I'll lay the two to one L.A. Kings. They need the game. San Jose has lost 19 of 21. They're two mm. and 19. Yep. And like I said, Dave, Kings fighting for a playoff spot. There's just no way in the world they can lose this game. So give me L.A. lay the two to one. This is this is this is like doubling down because we have I know, sharks. I know we have sharks under the points, Jack. While you were away, Wetzel got a little crazy and had to involve us on a bet on the sharks every night. He found the number that did not move after a loss. Total points under for the sharks. So now we're going to bring the black cloud on. I mean, the only way this one loses is if they play overtime, right? Like we can't. I mean, this is right. This we can't have the Kings be losing a game to the Sharks. Yeah. This would be a double whammy, a rainstorm yeah. of epic proportions. Not only for the Black <laughs> Cloud tonight, but would mess up the season win bet with the with the season <laughs> point total. We don't need storm. We're doubling down on the Kings tonight. Welcome back 
back. It is in game live prime time hour number two of our uh, two hour extravaganza. Scott Wetzel Day Share Pan for another full hour. We got Cam Stewart joining us in about 40 minutes. We got hockey. We got NBA. We got NIT. Uh, we got one baseball game, but believe it or not. Uh, so we'll definitely do that. We got a uh, little alternate universe. We got same game parlay. So it'll be a busy final hour here uh, on the grid as we hopefully make a couple of shekels along the way. Let me start, Dave, uh, before we get to the NBA and same game parlay, just to go mm -hmm. over some hockey stuff here real quickly. Uh, I yes. see your pens are still up three zip. Uh, Bruins yep. up three one. Not bad. Start the third period in both of those. A crazy game in Montreal, at least for Tampa Bay standpoint, up six to two. I think they beat the Canadians like 20 times in a row, something goofy like that. Um, and we got uh, San Jose and Nashville, big game, a real big game in the Western Conference for, uh, for playoff seedings and, and final playoff spots. They're tied at one. So anything uh, on, on the hockey page uh, jump on, uh, jump out at you right now? Uh, I'm so focused on this Penguins game. I can't really – I'm not worried about looking at these numbers. But that total <laughs> has me intrigued in the Tampa-Montreal game. I mean, it's 6-2 after two. Jack said it in our ears, 10 and a half. Are there going to be three more goals scored in that game? Probably not. I don't think so. That's but goals. that's that, that's yeah. the only one. Four to lay and one on Ottawa. I mean, how many you want to take four and a half with Ottawa with the th entire third period? Are they going to score? Are they going to get shut out? That's all. I mean, Avalanche Wild's going to end up being a good game, right? That That's 2-1 one right. after one. Um, Winnipeg up 2-1 at home against Calgary. Expected them to win that game, uh, scoring a little bit ahead of pace. Now that you did that with the black cloud, I, I can't like believe that we're going to be focused every single night. I can't even go to bed without knowing the final score. <laughs> All right. I mean, like in your three hours, yeah. you're back east. At least I'm in the same time zone. But I gotta worry about the sharks bet now. Like these are these are things that we'll be we'll be paying attention to before we, we get to this same game parlay. Did you involve the Clippers and the Denver game with this thing? We did. Uh, there weren't that many games to, to do it with, so I, I certainly couldn't do it with the L.A. Kings and San Jose Sharks, but uh, how about a little SGP time? Yeah, yeah, it's true. On the grid. All right. Uh, yes, a little same-game parlay action that they offer on all the sites, including FanDuel. So we got Denver and uh, the L.A. Clippers starting in a little while. So let's go with the, the Denver Nuggets. Why Denver? I'm going to lay the four, too. Uh, I'm going to get a little greedy here. Denver is 8-1 and one, their last nine games against the Clippers. You know, the, the, the one team that you think, okay, Western Conference Finals, I mean, Minnesota, OKC, they're all having good years. Are they really going to beat Denver? No, right? You know, are the LA Lakers? No. They, we showed that last year. Gold State's too old as well. You know, the, the one team that people kind of point to, oh, that Clipper team, that Clipper team, oh, that Clipper team is 1-8 and eight against Denver their last nine meetings. So they're playing again tonight, obviously. Give me Denver laying the four, even on the road. Got to go with a big night for the Joker. You know, Clippers really don't have a big man inside. I think if you do whatever he wants to do, uh, Joker, 25 points, minus 185, which is just criminal. Um, Joker, 12 rebounds, minus 195. Again, just, just criminal. And then Joker, 10 plus assists. So we're going for the triple-double tonight. Actually getting plus 110 on that. So when you put it all together, five legs, four legs, actually, uh, yeah. plus uh, 539. What do you think? It's not bad, but... We've talked about this. All the eggs are in one basket. Are you good with this? Like this is all Jokic. It's all Joker. It's it's got to be a triple double. There's no margin right. for error. I mean, I expect it to be a high scoring game. So which one gets you? We always do this as part of the segment. Right. I'm a little worried. I think the spread could get you. I think the Clippers might be live tonight. Um, although you have all the numbers to back it up that Denver's the side. Which one of those things are you most worried about? Really two, to tell you the truth. Uh, the 25 Ooh. points, because he, he takes days, or he, he takes like point games off. He, he always gets his rebounds, always gets his assists. But there are games where, you know, but it's generally like in blowouts. And, and you know, so he realizes that I don't have to play. You know, I'm just going to get my rebounds and get my assists. I, so I don't think that's going to happen. But it would be the rebounds, you know, 12 rebounds is a lot. And then the points, 25. 
I think he'll get 10 assists, believe it or not. And those are the ones with the better odds. But I'm, I'm confident he'll get the, the 10 assists. So I'm confident Denver will win. It's it's the rebounds and uh, that the 25 point. If I had to pick one, the 25 points. To tell you the truth, mm, I'm worried about the rebounds. I had that's a lot of rebounds. Had a guy on today. Yeah, uh, 12 plus. That's uh, I mean, if he gets 11, he gets the too. triple double. You know, it, right. so right. I think we're asking a lot. You know, like this is. Uh, now you give me something else to watch in the West Coast time zone. This is going to be crazy. I got to catch a red eye. I'm going to be in your neck of the woods in the morning. When you wake up, I'll be back east. So uh, I, I'll be sitting at the airport watching Wetzel's Bets. This could be a segment. Let's watch Wetzel's yeah. Bets. This is in good. WWW. Yeah, we right? got the three watch Wetzel's Bets. Yeah. You know, he <laughs> averages 12 rebounds, right? So. Right. He yeah. should get it, but my, my issue is like, why am I laying a buck ninety five when I'm asking them to get his average, right? I, I mean, shouldn't that be even or pick him? You know, minus one ten. See, but I mean, like, I shouldn't I'll have to lay a buck ninety five. I'm not getting a discount. It's not like I'm from the saying. Book. Well, from the perspective from the book, your profile. Yeah, I know what you're going to bet. You're not coming in to bet the other side. Everybody's coming in to bet Joker tonight. That's what you usually. Don't do. You usually don't right. fall into that, right? Like the book is going to give the people the price when they know they're going to lay the price anyway. So that's why you're laying one ninety five. It's not because you know it's the right side. It's just because that's the most. That's probably one of the most popular props of the entire day today. The right. Jokic triple double prop, the rebound prop, the points prop. I mean, it's it's by far. I, I would say of all the games, there's not a lot of marquee games, right? He's the marquee player. No. He's the MVP of the league. He's got the most bets. Hmm. Islanders just took a 3-2 lead over the uh, right. Blue Jackets. Excellent. Colorado 2-1 over Minnesota. I can't believe Minnesota's not going to make the playoffs this year. Yeah. Boy, that, that's uh... – I can't. Yeah. They're bad so early. They've gotten a hole. They can't get out of it. Um, get out. Yeah. Talk to Jack on the break. We're going to need the goal horn every time a goal is scored in these evening yes. games. Yeah, we, we need the goal horn, especially if it's a Penguin one. I need you to hold it for an extra, like, second or two, please. If it's <laughs> Penguin, it's, it's just hold it down. Hold that button down. Yeah. Thank you, Jack. Um, Florida 6 nothing over Ottawa. Oh. Uh, that's an interesting score there. Oof. Sens had their 15 minutes of fame when they won five in a row. They're about to lose their second in a row. Knicks making yeah. a comeback. How about that? Uh, oh, my Hawks, my Hawks are getting killed. Uh, look at the scores when we come back in the lines. So I'm not sure Alabama is the team to knock them off from this second consecutive national championship chase. But what will be the key for the Crimson Tide if they can even cover a number? That wing ball screen action, how you defend that, is going to be a problem because a Donovan Klingon it forces you to change so much what you do defensively if he's able to score inside. Only on Sports Grid. Talk all you want about how fat he is. No one can guard him. No one can stop him. He's a violent offender. He does whatever he wants in the low block and at the 10. He just does whatever he wants and scores at will, at nauseum. They're the Mike Tyson of college basketball. At some point, they're going to throw a haymaker. And when it connects, Pharrell, you're not getting up. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFC selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So, yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. It's smarter to be on sports grid. 
your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early the magical line. and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In-game live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. This sort of written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Welcome back in game live prime time right here on the grid. Scott Wetzel, Dave Sherapan. Final seconds, Dave. Seton Hall 79, Indiana State 77. Eight seconds left. Indiana State ball down two. They call the timeout. You shoot at three, or are you designing a play for two to send it to overtime? I think that's a uh that's a personal choice. If I was coaching and I have a play drawn up for a three. Let's go win the game. That's what I, you know, like Jimmy Chitwood. Who who says I'm going to make it? Yes. Just, give, give, <laughs> just give me the ball. I'm going to make it. Tell me you're going to make it. I'm going to draw you up a play for that. Otherwise, by the way, why would you ever design a play for someone else, right? If, if you watch that in Hoosiers, right? I, I mean, I don't know if that really happened, but, you know, the whole premise, you know, the, the guy's phenomenal. He's carried your team. Why would in final seconds you're going to design a play for somebody else? Like, coach. So if we get in the huddle right. and we got Jimmy Chipwood, we're drawing up a play for him. There's no question. Yes. All right. There's Especially no if he tells yeah. me he's going to make it, we're, like going, we're giving him yeah. the ball. Like that's it. Yeah. I don't need to be, I don't need to have a degree in coaching and we're giving, give the kid the ball. So uh, this is exactly what Dawson said not to happen. He does not want overtime. He's going to get his team total Ooh. under. What? Oh, what? What happened? Missed. Indiana State had three shots. I, that was the longest eight seconds in the history of mankind. <laughs> they had three shots at it, and they Is couldn't get the what, any of them to drop, including one which was blocked. Kid picks it up and heaves it, hits the front of the, uh, you know, for about 30 feet, you know, a, a Caitlin Clark shot, and it hit the front of the iron, Ooh. like off balance. See it all win. So it's final, 79-77? Yeah. FanDuel offered an over-under there. Uh, which I played. It was 77-77 with 56 seconds left. Oh, uh -oh. I told you not we to gotta get a different. Okay. Yeah, we really? got to get a different one, but it's an anti hey. Yeah, That's Dude, okay. That's I good. saw it coming. I told you guys on a break. They just went on a power play. Of course, it's Ovechkin. Here we go. Uh, it never is easy. These Pens Caps games, 3-1. Yeah. They're out shooting them 25 to 18. Man, Ovechkin just never stops. The guy's motor's unbelievable. It's amazing. Another good goal. And now the goalie, Ned, is, is is something's wrong with his mask. I don't know what's just happened. This is that was good. Thank you for the goal horn. It applies to everybody, even the Capitals, but the Capitals aren't going away, Scott. If they get the next goal, no. boy, he just wants them to get tied. Oh. You can grab them plus two and a half goals, minus 108. Now you got to worry bet. about the empty netter. 12 minutes That's left. That's a good I think bet. Love... Yeah. I'm waiting for That's a money a line. To pop up. I'm thinking even money line. I hate to tell you, Dave. But... 
Oh, that was perfect. I like you, you, I like betting on these teams that like they just scored a goal. You know, they can be down five one, but give it a team that just scored. They got a little juice, little momentum. You know, the the bench is all live now. Place is probably rocking, right? Especially with Ovechkin scoring. Yeah, yeah. I just got a text from a guy who's in the business, and he just said, "I can't believe the game didn't go over one sixty. The Sycamores went scoreless in the last three minutes and three seconds." They did not score a basket in the last wow. three minutes and three seconds of the game. Wow. Tough. One. That's like the Celtics' yeah. first half under last night. Like, that's the big thing. I mean, you know, oh. like Celtics oh. go over first half all the time. 62 yeah. and a half. What they have, like 58, I think it was, with nearly three minutes left. And it didn't go over the yep. 62 and a half. They scored like three points oh, the rest really. of the way. Oh, man. Guys on the text chain were talking about that. I mean, would you rather um, lose like that and get close, or would you rather they score 42 points and just never be in Oh, it? 42. Yeah, 42. Because then I'd rather be mad at the Celtics than I would Lady Luck. I'd never be mad. It's never good to be mad at a lady. So if oh. you come up a point short when, when you need three, right. four, or five points with three minutes left, that's just Lady Luck. It's just not on your side. You, then you just think, you know what, you know. If the Celtics score 40, then you're pissed off at them. And then you're like, oh, you're a bunch of bums, you know. Uh, somehow, some way you do. I had the over tonight, you know. So I'd rather be mad at them than I would uh, the other way around. But I do. Okay. You know, I, again, I don't have any stats. Just just the history of doing this stuff for as long as we have, Dave. When a team scores like Indiana State did, who they played last game? I, I'm drawing a blank on who they played in the semifinal. Um, Cincinnati, not Georgia, wasn't it? No. Uh, Seton Hall beat Georgia, and Indiana State beat uh, – ah, I'll tell you. It doesn't Hold matter. Um, I'll tell you right now. Utah. Indiana. Utah. Utah, right, right, right. So right. what was the final? 100, literally 100 to 92 or 100 to 90, 100 whatever it was? 100 to 90, yes. yes. Yeah, there you go, right? So what moron is now betting the under in that game? I, I just watched them score 100 and freaking 90 points, right? The whole world is betting the over, right? Oh, they scored 190, now it's down to 160. I'm getting a 30-point bargain, right? But I'm telling you, without having the official numbers, those unders come in so many more times than that team yeah. doing it over again, especially like in a nationally televised game. Um, I we, When we were talking to Jeff, I, I told you about Seton Hall, right? They're an under team. And I really thought they would shut down Indiana State even more, or slow the clock, however you want to describe it. So I, I did like the under in the game. Now, I, I did like Indiana State, too, I must admit. But I, I told the guys, you know, just a little hunch, because the whole world's betting it over. You get 190 points, and they play again two days later. Nobody but nobody's betting under in that game. And uh, another example, it's better to be on the side of uh, the voice in Vegas than the public. As that yep. game went under. And that was a good. That was a good uh, handicap by Dawson too. Jeff came in and said, it, "You know, the team total yeah. under um, yep. made perfect sense. If you didn't like the game under, you could go with that. This was not exactly correlated, but if Seton Hall was going to win, it was most likely going to be an under. If Indiana State was going right. to win, I think it was most likely to be an over. So, uh, look, that was a fun run. That was that was a great little you know co championship." high quality basketball tournament. There was some really good entertaining basketball games in, in the NIT. So, you know, there's now there's three games left in college basketball season. So you better get your fill on Saturday, two games, the championship game on Monday. I really hope it lives up to the billing because the look ahead number is UConn minus six against Purdue and minus a lot against NC state. If it's NC State in Alabama, that's going to be the super question mark Ooh. nobody saw coming if both dogs would actually win the game and upset them. Bama small favorite. No one's going to watch. You nope. know, the one thing, no one would watch that, Dave. You know why? Because no. NC State's a good story, but they're not a Cinderella in people's minds. We, we've seen too no. many Fairleigh Dickinsons and, and um, you know, Loyal of right. Chicago's. And uh, who was the little school there in, in, in New Jersey last year? Not fairly ridiculous. We've seen Princeton. And we've right. seen these, like, true Cinderellas. This is just a team that didn't play well. 
You know, it, it's not like 1983. You know, it's not it's not that NC State. It's it's just like a nondescript NC State team that no one says, oh, let's let's root for NC State because they're the underdog or the Cinderella team. No, nah, they're, 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 they're a team that ruined people's brackets. <laughs> that, that's what they are. They're not the Cinderella. They're a team that ruined everyone's brackets. And, and so I, I don't think anybody would watch that game. Can you believe I was on with uh, K-Dub, Kevin Walsh, on Game Time Decisions, and I didn't even realize it. He goes, I said, what do you think about the NIT tonight? He's like, I'm not talking about it. I said, why? He said, I'm in Jersey. Couldn't even have it up. It's not even yeah, available to bet. Can you imagine if one of those teams you said gets to the Final Four? He said, do they have this rule in North Carolina with NC State? They just went legal. They do not have this rule in North Ooh. Carolina. You can bet. On, but that's yeah. a lot of Arizona lot of revenue, too. right? For the books, yeah. if that happens, it's uh, it's pretty crazy to think that. I mean, I remember back in the day when we couldn't take bets on UNLV; it was no big deal. UNLV was yeah. no good, so it didn't. And then you know they, somebody came to their senses and changed the rule. That's how it starts in states. It doesn't always last. So couldn't bet on that game tonight. That's fine. So I'm not sure Alabama is the team to knock them off from this second consecutive national championship chase. But what will be the key for the Crimson Tide if they can even cover a number? That wing ball screen action, how you defend that, is going to be a problem because a Donovan Klingon it forces you to change so much what you do defensively if he's able to score inside. Only on Sports Grid. Talk all you want about how fat he is. No one can guard him. No one can stop him. He's a violent offender. He does whatever he wants in the low block and at the 10. He just does whatever he wants and scores at will at nauseam. They're the Mike Tyson of college basketball. At some point, they're going to throw a haymaker. And when it connects, Pharrell, you're not getting up. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFC selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows that QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So, yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In-game live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. This sort of written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
Welcome back in game live prime time. You know, Luke is a little fat. I got to tell you, you know, I got, I got the, uh, the Dallas Mavericks game on here. Uh, he, he's, you know, people tell me the, the Joker having a little baby fat. Eh, Luke has got a little baby fat on him. I don't know how. He, well, I know how because these guys don't play every single game. Now, that's why if they played every single game, they would get all that baby fat off. But uh, welcome back in game live. This is well, welcome I'm back. You, he's, he's, his it's face just... is like double chinned. I mean, you know, <laughs> what's going on here, Luke? You're a basketball player, for goodness sake. He's getting shape, bro. You know, let's get some, uh, let's see some muscle. I mean, calm down. It's Luca. It's Luca. Come on. I, it's, I need it's the fine. Hawks. Yeah, I need that. the Hawks. Yeah, I know. I you're, you're, this, that sounded personal. I mean, you don't have to yeah. go to the insult route. That sounded personal. It's never personal. Listen, in the book. I'm just. Remember, pointing fast you, you decipher them as insults if you like. I'm just saying he's got a little baby fat on him. That might be a you know, complimentary thing, you know? But it was just a little. Oh, my Rockets are dead. I knew it. I knew yeah. it. I, I gave the pick out, but I, I couldn't bet Golden State tonight. Right? I mean, I, I got the Rocket. I got to be rooting for them. But I did give it to the podcast crew. Eh, they're getting their ass kicked by 19. I knew it. Down 19. Getting fourteen and a half, even I wouldn't. I'd, I'd bet Gold State. This Gold State team's yeah. playing well. You know, Gold State and the Lakers are both both playing well um, at the right headed time. Headed for obviously. the collision course, right? They're headed yeah. for the collision course. A head to head, winner take all game. It's going to be fun. How about the Lakers at forty five to one? Are Stop. we buying into them Stop. that much? Stop. Stop. What Western are you Conference saying? Finals right? last the Walsh year? get to you. Did Walsh get Western to you? What, you blink twice if you're okay. The right. Lakers, what? To win the West? What? To win it all. I, I'm to an win all it or nothing all. guy. Yeah, they oh, can get to the finals if they want. They can lose by seven on a bad call in the NBA Finals as long as LeBron loses. They're I may have to put in a uh, first page. Look at these numbers. They're not even they're on the first page. Well. That's the what? boys at Vegas is a little slow at the wheel again. Uh, this team is on fire, Dave. Who, well, who are they going to be gonna afraid of? VIP plane for you. Uh, you can come out and bet it here in Vegas. I got guys that'll be glad to take it. See if the wife will let you get on the plane. Ask Lou or Cardano for the plane. Get them on the sports grid plane. Come out to Vegas. I'll get you the best price. I'll take you for a steak dinner and I'll send you home. How about that? How about this? I don't care if UConn wins. You know, Purdue, I have nothing against them. We like to make fun of them, but uh, I don't want to see Caitlin Clark win. And now that LSU is no longer in the picture. So how about a Iowa women's basketball, uh -huh. NBA, LA Lakers, 45 to 1, what are you NHL. Doing? This is not New part York. of the S and W Corporation. We need to have a board no, meeting right now. What are you separate. doing? New York, New York Rangers, three team absolute black car, cloud parlay. That would pay one thousand eight hundred and thirty nine to one. Ten dollar bet some... on that would get you eighteen thousand dollars. We'd have to swallow our pride and have all nice... these goofy teams send, win. But send out one through. I, That'll make somebody's yeah. night, whoever's that desk comes across and has to approve that right. one. They'll be like, yeah. <laughs> hey, look at this one. Come here. You're not uh, going to believe what the three disc guys just put together. Oh. I mean, I'm not trying I to say put anything that about the Rangers. But the Rangers, the Rangers made our always choke parlay. I, they did. You know, we had that. Championship parlay. Yeah. Right. So. Let's go. The Let's Lakers, focus. See, the thing is, LeBron and the Lakers would be the last one. So, Thank goodness. even though hedge. we may not think they're going to win, and they would be heavy no. underdogs, right? You know what thing Jack said? Uh, I, I wanted to bring up with you. He said the Celtics would be like a minus 180 favorite against Denver in the finals. I don't think they nope. would be that big, would they? Nope. 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 Right? Nope. They would have home nope. court advantage, but I don't think they would be almost two to one, right? Uh no, what would it what would the opening game be spread wise? Four? Boston at home, depending on what happened in the other series. Yeah, four. I don't think it would be Somewhere much higher than four either like way. Three, three yeah. or four. Probably minus one sixty for the series, minus one fifty for the series. Um right. it's still two three two, right? 
the NBA Finals? Uh, no. They played 2-2-1-1-1. Two, 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 one, one, one. Are you sure? Yeah. They switched that a couple of years ago. Okay. Yeah. Well, so then I think that would actually favor Denver. If I was thinking they split in Boston and Denver goes home with the you know one one, they're the favorite. So I can't get too far away from even money. I mean, right. it, again, it'll depend on the health of the teams and the health of the guys. We'll see. Was there another goal scored? Was that? I mean, like, is is did 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 the Canadians just do we have to crank this thing up again right now? I think the Canadians just scored again. It's now. Six four. Can you imagine they and, blow this uh, game? We need under we need under ten and a half. Tampa and Montreal. You did say Montreal might come back in a third period. They've they've gotten two goals to a third. That team won't go away. Yeah. I thought the total was looking good under ten and a half. Not so good. Not so good now. Another goal. Ruins. Putting away. The pan empty netter. I mean the, the hurricanes. That's it. It's a wrap. That's it. Four one. That's some nice hockey by Boston. Back to back Boy. to back. Capitals, Predators. I think I said Florida uh before. Predators they shut out three nothing. And now Carolina. That's here it comes. How about the Preds losing here three straight after their sixteen and zero and two streak? Yeah. Kind of uh, coming way, back to the pad. Be a bit naturally, yeah. Right. Did you see the clips of the Devils and the Rangers yesterday with the open? I did. I, I, I did. Yeah. Did you see the yeah. shot from like high up when it just looked like I mean it was a complete melee? Yeah. Everybody was fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could see everything. Yeah. yeah. The Rangers are getting they're getting in playoff form. They're tar- starting to you know do that stuff. They're getting the goaltending. It's it's I I don't want to. Jack said it in our ear. The Rangers are different this year. They might be different. They might they they might be different. But would they play the Bruins in the first round? The way this is set up, no. No, would they. They exactly. Okay, uh, but no, they definitely would not. Uh, Rangers are in the other division. So Boston is going to play. Well, it all depends on who gets the President's uh, Trophy. So right now, the Rangers lead Boston by three. So it all okay. Okay. Brain surgeon to figure out the NHL playoffs. So if it stays that way, um, I think Boston would get Tampa Bay, which is not a good thing. Ooh. Uh, no Ooh. Rangers would get. Rain, well, no, the Rangers would get the Flyers or the Capitals. Rangers yeah. would get Washington. He said right now. Okay. Yeah, the last playoff team. So. <laughs> That'll be good. Let's but get yeah, Colorado. Be, be or let's get Connecticut in first in our three-game right. SW Corp. Then we can root for the team in the West. I think we've got a couple good opportunities. And at worst, uh, we'll we'll try to get the Florida one home, at least the Eastern Conference Finals. And then we'll have to work some business. We'll have to, you know, walk around books, see some guys about some things, and make some moves. Which I'm good with. How about this I'm good with bacon? How about this on FanDuel? What? Uh, Connecticut to win both games. You know, obviously this one in the final by right. ten points or more. Ooh. Plus two to one. Two wow. ten actually. I was gonna say you better be getting yep. at least three to one. I thought in my head, but aren't I mean you think they're gonna? I mean they're come eleven the half point game. favorite. Yeah, so you're getting a, a, a you know a point and a half break in the first game. What would they be favorites against Purdue? Six. Look ahead, number six. If anybody six. wants to bet on a dog, you go to six and a half. Yeah, it's not going to be. That's right where it's going to be. So, I don't know. You're laying double digits in both that's games if you do that parlay. Mm. Right. Better Versus off just betting roll, the first roll. one and roll it over. Yes. Never Industry, you better, you better off the guys. Yeah, that's bet. Take the winnings and add it up with the original bet, and roll it over onto the next pile. Uh, yeah. Calgary just because it's Winnipeg. not worth the one and a half points, right? I mean, I'd rather lay an extra one and a half against Alabama and save five, you know, four maybe against 
Purdue. Yeah. Correct. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes these things are like pretty cool. Like like they have um but yeah, you know, they're not they're, they're not dopes. They're, they're not dopes. So they got a goofy one, right? Connecticut men's and women's basketball team to both win. Eleven thirty. Okay, that, that's you know certainly Connecticut. The men's going to win, right? But then when I did the women's championship number and just parlayed it with the men's championship number, it came out to be the same eleven thirty. So you know, I can, you know, they, they just wrote it differently. They just kind of like threw it out there. So if you want to parlay these two, here it is. I thought it would be a they little bit more. It, you know, they make it easy but, to find. We right. we had on today. We had a CEO of a new sports book in New Jersey. They just launched. It's called Prime Sportsbook. And um, we talked a lot about the business, what some apps do, other apps don't. Popping up bets at the top, very important. People don't like to scroll their phones. Simple. Right. I don't use my phone. I do it on a computer. I'm not old, 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 old school, but I'm old school when it comes to betting on a computer. That's old yeah. school. <laughs> That's old school. Sam coming, coming up next. Coming up next. So I'm not sure Alabama is the team to knock them off from this second consecutive national championship chase. But what will be the key for the Crimson Tide if they can even cover a number? That wing ball screen action, how you defend that, is going to be a problem because a Donovan Klingon it forces you to change so much what you do defensively if he's able to score inside. Only on Sports Grid. <laughs> Talk all you want about how fat he is. No one can guard him. No one can stop him. He's a violent offender. He does whatever he wants in the low block and at the 10. He just does whatever he wants and scores at will at nauseam. They're the Mike Tyson of college basketball. At some point, they're going to throw a haymaker. And when it connects, Pharrell, you're not getting up. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFC selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. This sort of written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
Welcome back in game live prime time right here on the grid on this uh, Thursday evening. Scott Wetzel, Dave Sherapan. I'm filling in for uh, Joe Ranieri, who's usually uh, working tonight, but uh, Joe is out uh, on assignment, as they say in the business. So uh, stepping in and having a lot of fun uh, along with uh, Dave. And of course, our good buddy uh, Cam Stewart joins us now as he takes over top of the hour with him and Gabe Morenci. What's going on, Cam? How are you tonight, bud? Pretty good, pretty good, Scott. I thought you'd be refereeing, uh, you know, women's basketball know. tonight, but we got to do what we got to <laughs> do to pay bills when we bet on the San Jose Sharks. I got something to say to my boy, Dave Sherapan. You people, okay. people are talking about the Washington Capitals. Screw the Washington Capitals. The Pittsburgh Penguins are making a late charge. These guys are, why didn't you do it earlier? On the Penguins tonight. Scott, I got a problem. It's an addiction to a shark. Do we do it again? Uh, this team is like literally like, I, I don't know. Like I, I, I'm basically in the interrogation room. And they're like, bet on me. I'm like, you think I'm laying 310 with the Kings? Like, what am I, stupid? And maybe like they're playing better. Is this the night Didn't that the Sharks Did you do the under bet up? with us? Did you not hop uh, on the under 79 and a half uh, or 49 and a half uh, San Jose bet? Right. That you oh, made fun points, of? Remember? Sure. Listen, 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 Wetzel. I told, I told you. I, I told you like. It sounds good. Uh, looks good. Here's the deal, Scott. Yeah. I'm playing with house money because I got the Sharks to be the worst team at plus 425 at the start of the year. Uh, it doesn't matter if okay. they win the rest of their games. Nobody's going to. They're last. So you know what? I don't care. I'm going to take the Sharks plus one and a half tonight. Look at this. On my, on, uh, on my birthday, thought I was 50. I'm actually 49. And I'll tell you <laughs> something. For the first <laughs> time. In weeks. No, Ashley, Dave, I really, I woke up and go, wow, I'm 50. And then I'm like, nah, 70, uh, 40. Yeah, 49. Ash K. Batea. I give you guys golf picks every week. Carver yeah. hit it. Yes. I hit it. You bet all the guys we bet first round leaders, a smooth 65 to one. Bingo. We're there. But Dave, you know what the problem is? Due to my horrible play recently, I usually put 20 or 30 on these guys. So it would have been like 1800. But you know what? Even 10 bucks at 65 to one is 650. Yeah. Scott, what would a smart man do? Invest? Buy gold? Minerals? Me? How about we bet on the sharks? Let's go. Give that's me my investor at TD Bank. Camera, wherever. We have a problem here. I think you should really, you know, why don't we try? You know what? Hey, Jerry, here's a tip. Shut up. You already got my mortgage. You're fleecing me on account fees. I'll do whatever the hell I want to do. And if I was an older guy, an Italian, i put my money in a damn mattress. Don't tell me what to do. I'm betting the Sharks right. plus one and a half tonight against the Kings. And if I lose, is I don't even care. Because How's the black say? cloud play of the night is the Kings. was the Kings in regulation. So you oh. actually oh, Scott, are, are battling, you. which this would black be um, a one-goal win in regulation, and you both can get to the Ooh, window. That's true. That would actually, let's get this thing 4-3 Kings. And be That's good. True. I mean, even three, two kings. Am I looking at the uh, score correctly? The Royals are up ten to one. Oh, yes. God, I'm actually having wow. a day today. See, Scott, I'll tell you something. I told people last night. I'm like, I don't care if the Royals are fifty five cents or whatever. I'm betting these guys tomorrow. They've been playing really yeah. good. They've been playing against Baltimore, and now the Competitive. White Sox roll into town. Yeah. I don't care, Dave. You know this too from the book. I always look mm -hmm. for a plus. But anything under like it was like a buck fifty, a buck fifty-five. Like the White Sox are horrible. The Royals yes. at least have wit. You know, Salvador Perez is still a very, very solid player. They have a lot of guys on the team. Reagans is one of the best lefties going. Like this guy's a very dangerous pitcher. You you know baseball. The Royals are going to be, be give people fits. The White Sox they just suck. Period. End of story. But you know what the difference is? The White Sox you get plus one thirty. And I take a team that really sucks in the Sharks at way better prices than that. So you know True. what? Let's go. Scott, hate to say it, going into shark-infested waters, you're probably going to win. I'm not arguing. Yeah. I'm not arguing at this point. But you know what I'm taking? <laughs> a huge plus price, rolling my Batea money into the Sharks like a stupid man would do. Not a smart man. I'll give you, a, I'll give you a hunch bet. I'll give you guys a hunch bet if you want. Over 11 and a half White Sox in Kansas City. They're in the top yeah. of the eight. You got a chance for the White Sox to score. If they don't score, I think chances are pretty good. You know, this is the first game of a four-game series. They're just going to throw an outfielder on the hill. And, you know, you're not going to get a real pitcher. 
in the bottom of the eighth inning for the White Sox. So God, I, all you need is I, one run. I love you. I love you. I love well, your new balance. I love everything. I want you to <laughs> succeed when your family beats you down. But let me tell you a story. I saw this all thing right. two days ago with the Jays. Kanaya Falefer, uh, well, you, you know who I'm talking about, Dave. Sorry, right. the name's escaping me now. Isaiah yeah. Kanaya yeah, yeah. Falefer, right? Yeah, Yankee, yeah. yeah, whatever. Yeah. Sorry, thank you, Jack. I'm just, I've had a crazy day today. He went, bam, yeah, yes, Yankee too. Bam, 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 three up, three down. And I remember Buck Martinez. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Maybe the Jays starter should have pitched like Gunner Kovaleva. We wouldn't be in this jam tonight. I'm telling you, sometimes these position players go in there and guys kind of feel for them and go, yeah, whatever, pop up, me. Like, you know what I mean? Am I, am I right, Dave? Do they, like, almost yeah. take pity on a player who's coming in down 10 runs in a game and go, you know what, let's just get the hell out of Dodge and hit the bar? Sometimes. Maybe, but other times it's let's light this guy up. I don't want to be the guy to make an out against That's, this guy, you know. Yes, so yes, you gotta yes. You gotta be careful if it's a veteran who's got a secure contract. Everything like yeah, maybe you know they don't really give away at bats, but sometimes it's like yeah, whatever. But nobody wants to be that guy that gets you know pitched to by a position player. And definitely you don't want to strike out. I mean, if you make an out, hit the ball hard. That's fine. Exactly. Um, Basketball game tonight. Wetzel's on it with the with the same game parlay. This might be a Western Conference Finals preview. Denver at the Clippers. Um, the computer picks this to be a close game. Denver by one. What say you, Cam, about this basketball game tonight? Really interesting, uh, Dave. Remember the other night we were on, I think it was the Dallas Mavericks when they were playing uh, Golden State and Sorry, it's Denver and the Clippers, but here's the thing. The Clippers are one of these teams that I think kind of see the finish line saying, let's be healthy going into the playoffs. Kawhi Leonard, former Raptor. Like, what is, what's the Clippers' MO, guys? Like, they're going yeah. nowhere unless everybody's at 100%. That's the whole thing. Right. I don't know exactly what we're going to do with this game. And I can't lie, Dave. I, I was so focused on golf today. Hell, I'm I'm betting the women's amateur at the Masters. Like, I have more interest in that than a stupid Clippers. And I, I, I'm I'm honest. Like, I I am so in deep with college. I brought like the NIT final, the NCAA, uh, you know, Final Four. That's what yep. I look at regular NBA right now and go, like, what am I doing? Unless I like unless like Bovi, we have a t- conversation and goes, you know what, Cam, I like what you're leaning to. It's kind of like a store, Dave. Like, I can't buy lobster tails, rib caps, whatever. I got to stop somewhere because I don't have enough money to do all the things I want to do. I would probably take the Clippers in this spot, but I'm going to be honest with you. I'm thinking about hockey, and I'm thinking about, hell, the Frozen Four. Guys, I got one for you, too. Oh, all right. It's coming up. I know it's not tonight, but just, just for the future and all the listeners out there, just doing a little bit more research and Jack knows he's a big hockey guy. The Denver Pioneers are a very successful team when they play to the under. Their game against uh, BU, Boston University, it's seven under. I think it's correlated. If you like the dog, and I, I, a lot of times people are like, oh, this bet is correlated. I'm like, is it? But this one really is. Denver wins when they play unders, so I'm going to take under seven. The other game, sorry, Morency, he even admits, I like Boston College in the other game. But I really, really like the under seven in the Denver Pioneers BU game. Wow. Hmm. I just got two of my books here, and they have a side, and they have a puck line, but they have not put the total up in either game. Cam, interesting. So Vandal does. You may be, Vandal's got it. Maybe on. Yeah, something. of course they do, Wetzel, because th- th- I'm telling you, it's a great book for hockey and stuff. And another thing. So you're telling me Seven I'm going to a ball. restaurant and I can't have a hamburger? Sorry, Dave. Like, how do you not post a total? Like. Get with it. I don't know. That's terrible. So you like the under BU you or BC? What? I, oh, I like BC. BU Denver? Okay. I like Denver so under, under seven. BC. Yeah, that's what I'm doing, Wetzel. All right. I'll follow you. I don't know what, I don't know what else you're, th- you're thinking about. So, oh, God. April I really wish you were. I really, I really April wish you were. This works with me tonight, Scott. <laughs> it really breaks my heart. It's one week from today. The games are one week from that. today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know I'm really early. I know I'm really early, but I the reason I do this now 
is I guarantee that line is six and a half or six by next week. Guarantee. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's put it you in. You know what else I'll is put it in from today? The Masters. And I know you're starting to put in the work. You're watching this golf tournament. And, yeah, uh, where's it at again? Texas, somewhere, San Antonio. Have Beautiful. you even started to make any plays or look at anything for the Masters game? Yeah, I have, Dave. I'm looking at a lot of things for the Masters. And the thing is, I'm tr- I haven't really like put anything in other than Hideki Matsuyama when he was playing like junk. I got him at 40 to 1. I guarantee it'll oh. be like 25 to 1 at, at Augusta. He's won before. He knows the course, especially if it plays wet. I Another thing people need to know about Augusta, you have to know the conditions of the course because it's really, if it's wet, guys like him are going to do oh. really well. What happened, Uh-oh. Scott? Tell me. Wild? Uh, Dallas wins by 14 as Atlanta, the guy can you know, Dallas first one is a 12 point game, so I'm getting 12 and a half. Of course, the next one out the clock. Oh. I'm gonna go I'll just finish my story real quickly. Dallas wins by 14. The guy from Atlanta threw up a three. It was in, circled around, and popped out. And instead of losing by 11, they lose by 14. Uh, Sorry, Jack, can you, what, can you repeat that uh, buzzer? What just happened? The Jets. Jets. The Jets. Jets. <laughs> Jets. <laughs> Against hey, Calgary. I got one for you guys. Yeah. I got one for you. Here we go. Scott, the madness just keeps on continuing with a crazy psycho like me. Give me the Minnesota Wild, plus one and a half and plus 300 wow. live against the Avalanche at home. Wow. Okay. I re- and it's season, not just like a – it's not, not a vibe. Like Colorado is thinking about the big picture. They're off to a great start, sure. Minnesota's down one goal, and I'm getting plus one and a half, and I'm getting three to one. I'm in. The Predators game, I'm not touching because I love this no. team. And I actually got futures on the Predators, guys. I have one book I got 30 to 1, and the other book I got 25. I think they're – what are they now? Like 16? Let's take a look with the, whatever the Predators are. Oh, Those guys are hot, all. man. They're hot. Uh, yeah, and I'm telling you, I think they're going to – I think they're a very dangerous team. I think the Predators are under the radar. I'm going to take them in their series. 40. Don't tell Marenzi. If they play the Canucks, I'm going to take the Predators. <laughs> <laughs> We've I was on started. Arizona last <laughs> night. I was like, they tied it up. I'm like, perfect. And then I, then you come back with the Canucks, right? So we're all happy at plus one and a half. But guys, honest to God, thank God I got a first round leader. Shout out to Carver, Mike Carver. We've been riding Ash K. Batea. He looks like our the guy who does our homework at night as we like, you know, tackle him and say do our calculus. But anyways, <laughs> nine under bogey three sixty three. Let's rock and let's get a winner this week and let's damn bring it home. More Masters next week, Scott. I'll have a mitful for you. Mitful. There you go. Cam Stewart, top of the hour with Gabe. So I'm not sure Alabama is the team to knock them off from this second consecutive national championship chase. But what will be the key for the Crimson Tide if they can even cover a number? That wing ball screen action, how you defend that, is going to be a problem because like Donovan Klingon, it forces you to change so much what you do defensively if he's able to score inside. Only on Sports Grid. <laughs> Talk all you want about how fat he is. No one can guard him. No one can stop him. He's a violent offender. He does whatever he wants in the low block and at the 10. He just does whatever he wants and scores at will, at nauseam. They're the Mike Tyson of college basketball. At some point, they're going to throw a haymaker. And when it connects, Pharrell, you're not getting up. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. 
But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early the magical line. and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. This let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Welcome back in game live prime time wrap it up shop uh, cam and uh, Gabe will take over at the top of the hour for the next three right here on the grid so uh, last chance uh, Dave to put in a couple of shekels on some uh, some bets uh, we got the Colorado 3-2 over Minnesota uh, in the well after two starting the third shortly after two Nashville over St. Louis uh, we got Winnipeg up uh, 3-2 against Calgary, so that, that's a month, about 14 to 1. On a one goal lead, betting in hockey is crazy. So, uh, <laughs> And I'm still looking for that one more run in the. Uh, ooh, we got a runner on second, bottom of the eighth, although the White Sox do have a real pitcher in there, but their bullpen is so bad it doesn't even matter. So, or over 11 and a half is still very much alive. So, any, uh, any final thoughts? Any final plays for you? No, uh, we got Pirates early, Penguins late. Sixers come back and beat the Heat. That was an out, nice outright win. Good, good nice. night for the state of PA. That was very good. Um, I won't see you again until That's the right. Final Four is decided. Let's officially kind of agree to root for one team. I don't want to have to worry about crossing the streams. I might see right. you this weekend. Um, you know, in your neck of the woods, but. Is it UConn? I mean, can yeah. we agree that it's UConn? Yeah, we can agree. Okay. No one's going to beat them. They're a machine. They're a machine. Although the, the Edie right. would be a lot of fun. That would be a pretty good final, right? I, I know the Cinderella with NC State, but as a Sign player, me I, I up. <laughs> yeah. That's, Purdue that's, and, I, and uh, I, UConn. Right. Then I'm, we'd I'm okay really watching that game. That, there it is. Yeah. I mean, those, and they're gigantic nice. favorites. That's okay. That's good. That's good for yeah. ratings. That's good for TV. That's good for uh, a fan. And I think that'll leave us more betting opportunities. If NC Bigger State does. Bigger surprise for you. Bigger surprise mm. for you. NC State over Purdue or Alabama over UConn? Oh, Alabama over UConn. Maybe I don't so. even think it's close. They have to shoot the lights out. We're talking 86 Villanova night. Okay? Right. And for you, those of you that don't know, look it up. Look it up. <laughs> Enjoy your trip. 